What's up, everybody? Welcome to a special edition of On The T. No, I am not Anita Marks, and unfortunately for y'all, I don't look as good as she does, but my name is Brett Yaris, and I'm the Chief Innovation Officer for Pro Football Network, and I'll be filling in for her as best I can. But don't worry, because with me today are the usual suspects. First up, we have John Mascari. What's up, John? How you doing? Hey, Brett. How are you? I'm good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. And of course, we have uh, the CEO and founder of Golf for Her, Christina Thompson. What's up, girl? I like seeing you up there in the upper left-hand corner of my screen. <laughs> it's weird. Usually, I'm, pop I'm, usually I'm popping in like uh, like the wizard from Wizard of Oz to like tell you guys why you're messing up and blaming me for things that are not my fault. But that's a conversation for a different time. <laughs> Uh, today, we have something super fascinating, I think, happened over the weekend in the way that the BMW Championship ended. Um, it ended in this epic playoff battle between everyone's favorite and best friend on the tour, Bryson DeChambeau. I mean, that guy gets along <laughs> with everybody. Um, Such and, a good guy. And I think everyone was rooting for him, and they were disappointed that Patrick Hanley ended up with the win and of course i'm being super facetious but let's go around the horn here guys uh christina start us off what was it like for you watching that playoff battle and and at what point did you think man patrick really could could pull this off here well it was actually funny i was up at um i was it was sunday afternoon right and so like we're trying to wind down our weekend and i couldn't get in my car to leave the weekend because i'm like oh my god we are in a playoff we're going like four holes five holes six holes. like i was standing up i think john and Nita and i were like I was texting like vomit emojis to everyone because I was like nauseous watching like shot after shot. It was like, you know, Bryson was in the water or then Cantley was in the water and then there's no way he can come back. And then he one player turns around, he makes a putt. I mean, it was, it was like this yo-yo of emotions this the entire afternoon, which was so much fun to watch. And I think I was getting texts from different people going like, this is crazy. Cause it was just, you just didn't think that the player you know, was going to finish it off. And it just really defined the moment that you can, you know, dry, was it uh dry for show, putt for dough? I mean, that to me was like right. the, it like surmised the entire time. I mean, Bryson was out there driving, dominating. We were on 59 watch, right? Uh, the other day, but then here we come, the final stretch, it came down to the putting and Cantley was just cool, calm and collected and was able to drain that 18 foot on uh, on 18 for the win. So it was just so much fun to watch. Golf is not boring. John, at, at what point were you finding yourself rooting for one of them to win? Was it the first playoff hole? <laughs> was it the second? Like, at what point were you like, was it, was it the moment you realized Bryson was involved? Well, I mean, I started rooting on Thursday morning pretty much for Patrick Cantley <laughs> when I had 20 bucks on him. Thank you, you very go. much. Um, but it was, as you said, Christina, a playoff for the ages. This is now four weeks in a row that we've had a playoff on the PGA Tour. And this one certainly didn't disappoint. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, Cantley made 31 birdies. Think about that. 31 birdies on 72 holes for the, for the tournament. It was amazing. I think it's only been done twice before. One of the best punting performances I've ever seen um, on tour. Listen, he was he was like an assassin. He, he beat – the field in so many different ways. He had the putter going. He, he drove the ball well. He can get up and down from a garbage can uh, around the greens if you ask him to. I still don't want to take anything away from Bryson. Like you said, you know, we, we were on 59 watch there for a while. He did shoot 60. The guy made six bogeys and a double and still had was 27 under <laughs> for a tournament, which is unbelievable. Uh, had the driver locked in and, and you know, for Bryson, had the putter going, but – I still think he needs to improve around the greens with his short game. He has to have like one more facet of his game be truly great in order to get to that pinnacle of being the world's best player. But I think I think actually think Bryson got a few fans this week because he showed some human qualities. He was doing the fist pumping and he gave everything he had to this tournament and he wasn't so Bryson robotic as as people have said. So I think um, I think this was a, a tough pill for him to swallow, and we'll, you know we'll touch a little bit about how he exited the course a little bit later in the show as a teaser. But I think he's still in a good spot coming into East Lake. So yeah, let, let's let's stay on Bryson for a second. What happened um, on the 14th hole between him and 
Cantlay that sort of added a little bit of edge? Was it something Bryson, you know, I don't know that we were able to really decipher, but from your perspective, the trained eye that you guys have that I certainly lack, um, what was the issue there? And, and do you think it motivated Cantlay to, to say, F it, I'm going, I'm going all the way for this thing? Yeah, I think uh, what had happened, uh, Brett, was before DeChambeau hit his approach shot, he turned and talk, told Cantley to stop walking. So he was kind of walking behind him, and I think he caught him out of the corner of his eye or hurt him or something made him kind of stop and go through and ask him, hey, could you just hold on a second? I think um, personally, I think it's probably the media maybe growing a little out of proportion than what it really was, and these guys are pros out there. I think, hey, just hold up for a second. But uh, – who knows? It might have lit a fire under Patrick. I think it was obviously uh, evident in his play, but I think um, it's not another Brooks Bryson <laughs> situation as we had before. There's always little, you know, there's the players are always doing that to each other. So I don't think it's uncommon. And, you know, you're on a playoff hole. And sometimes, I mean, I know when you're distracted and you're peripheral and you're in so, you're just so aware of everything that's around that. I, I think from my understanding that, yeah, I think Cantley and his caddy, Matt, were probably just walk behind them, just moving their clubs. He was going to hit, and it, he just heard yeah. everything. I think he could hurt he, – at that point, he would have heard, like, a worm fart on, like, two fairways over at that point. So I think <laughs> well, he was he, that, he, definitely he, sensitive at that point. He's certainly not the best player, as we've documented before. But what I <laughs> loved is that Cantley, on that hole, knocked in a 22-footer, was like, shut up, Bryson. Let's go. Like, it kind of – Maybe it was giving him a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a spark, you know. Sometimes golfers yeah. need that little extra push as they do in other sports. But. Before we uh, before we continue here, I'd be remiss to not uh, bring up the fact that uh, what I found myself doing during that that epic playoff battle was uh, consuming more and more drinking, more drinks, more more beverages. <laughs> And uh, yeah. that brings me that brings me to uh, the point that we usually lead off with, but because I'm new at this, I kind of botched the uh, the send off here. Um, she probably needs 19th- to make another one. She needs to make another one already. Yeah, it's our it's our 19th whole drink, and the and that's the danger, right, John? And waiting this long into the show to do it is Christina might be might be half right, in the, the bag here. Right. But let's, I give you more entertainment the longer we wait. (laughs) Tell us us a bit about our 19th whole drink. What's the drink of the show for today's show? Well, I'll be honest, you know, this week, I know we have a lot of talk about the FedEx Cup, but this week is the kickoff of the Solheim Cup week. And I mean, if you love team events, you've got Ryder Cup, you've got President's Cup, and you have the Solheim Cup. And that is um, starting actually this Saturday. So... I so I created a drink that was kind of a hybrid from other drinks to do like a red, white, and blue drink. But I've been sitting here and all of my colors are now mashed up together. So what used to look red, white, and blue looks like um just a hot mess. Oh my <laughs> god. Coca-Cola with cherry. Right. Didn't yeah, you ever do so, like did you ever paint eggs at Easter? Like you can't mix the uh, colors. It just didn't work out for me. I've got blue <laughs> coloring all over me. I'm so sticky, but it is. It's so. It, I think this is a great drink because it's Labor Day weekend coming up. We've got all these festivities, so it's. I had to do a red, white, and blue drink. We have our cranberries, our blue Carago liquor, and raspberry flavored vodka. It's really good. It's really yummy. But um, you definitely can't mix it in advance, and and, and it only lasts like two seconds. So, sorry, so it's guys. one of those drinks that looks good in the picture. Mm -hmm. but that's the last time that it looks good. You've got like 30 seconds to enjoy it. And then all the colors kind of merge together. And and in all seriousness, what, what are you on number one still, or are you working your way on two? I'm on one right now. Okay. Your pacing is good. I'm pacing. You could could play at a public course. Great. Yes, I can. Um, Okay. So now that that is done and we'll monitor Christina's situation as we go on through the show. (laughs) There's always, from from usually usually and for those of you guys who are watching who don't know this, uh, typically I am the I'm behind the glass. I produce. I'm throwing the <laughs> graphics and everything up. Um, and one of my favorite games to play to keep you know to to buy to to pass the time as the show goes on is where what levels Christina at uh, in 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 our inebriation here. And uh, we've had some good shows. We, we've had some good yeah. ones. So the drinks are are a mainstay. They need to keep coming. But yeah. let's take it back to. Uh, Take it back to golf for a second here. Um, I want to move on a little bit from the BMW. And for those of you guys who don't know, in just about 10 minutes, a little more than 10 minutes, Patrick Cantley's caddy is going to be joining us on behalf of Gillette. Um, 
So I'm really excited for that. It's going to be pretty awesome. Not often do we get the champions caddy to come join us and, and talk about the recent victory and some other stuff that uh, he's going to be involved in things like the caddy network where he's going to be doing some content for. So, so again, uh, about 10 minutes, Matt minister is going to come in and he's going to sit with us and, uh, and give us some, some really interesting insight into what it was like to be on Patrick's bag for the day. So in lieu of that, let's look ahead a little bit. Okay. Um, and we talked off the air um, that we might see this for the end of the show, but I'm going to kind of flip the script on you guys and, br and bring it up now. And that's the Ryder cup. Um, I wasn't going to talk about it because still a couple weeks away, but it appears the order, the pairings, or at least the top six participants are all going to be set. So, so John, do me a favor, walk us through <laughs> how we got to the, to the point of where we know who is playing how did we get there? Points, all that stuff. Help me understand that. Yeah, sure. So throughout the season, uh, players accumulate points towards their Ryder Cup standings. And uh, that stops after the BMW. So coming into the, tour, the, the point ranking, the time you can get points is over. And now the top six players in the points list are automatically on the Ryder Cup team. So USA captain Steve Stricker has 12 players on his team six of which are locked in by their abilities and their play throughout the season. He has to pick the other six on his own. They're his captain's pick. So okay. what we know is that it's Colin Morikawa, uh, Justin Thomas, uh, DJ, uh, Kepka, DeChambeau, and now Patrick Hanley after his win at the BMW. Those are your six locks. And then you look down the list more and you've got maybe about – seven or eight guys that can fill those last six spots, in my opinion. And that's going to be up to Captain Steve Stricker to pick and put his team together that way. Um, years ago, it was only four captain's picks, but uh, the the PGA of America and the PGA Tour has decided to give the captain some more uh, leeway to put his own team together, would put personalities together, not just by player ranking. So, Interesting to see how that happens. Um, a couple of people that I think are locks. Tony Finau, after winning the Northern Trust, he's sitting seventh. I think he's a lock on the team. Uh, the same would go for uh, defending gold medal uh, champion Xander Shoffley, who won the gold in Tokyo. I think he would be a lock for the team as well. Jordan Spieth, sitting ninth on, on the player list, has had an unbelievable season. I would say he'd be a perfect person to put on that team. And then you look at that last spot – and we could talk a little bit about it, Christine. I'd love to hear some of your insight with who you think would fit well on this team of uh, band of misfits, maybe as they're being called. Um, but guys like Harris English and, and, and Daniel Berger, Scotty Scheffler, maybe some of those guys. Honestly, I think if I had to pick one guy to fill in the rest of the team, it would be Harris English. I just think he has had an incredible season this year. I mean, he is always up there. He's been in contention. He's been playing outstanding golf. Um, and I think that, you know, Stricker, when he has to make a decision, he's got to look at the players and who's hot. I think this is a player who's hot right now. And I would, I think that would, that's where I would put my money on. And yeah, when I did he have I, to make, when is that decision? I, I forget. I think he's it. got, after, just after the tour championship, they'll, they'll finalize okay. the team. But I think, I think English is a lot. I think Finau's, Shoffley, Spieth, and English are all locked. So that makes, yeah. that's 10. So you got to give me two more. Um, I can't believe Daniel Berger is in a lock the, the season he's had. A win. Yeah. He's got eight top tens. He's only missed two cuts all season. Uh, I think he's in the top ten in scoring average on tour. I could see him making the team. Scotty Scheffler was a great match player. Who you know I love. Um, Sam Burns has been playing pretty good of late. You know, yeah. a lot of people are, yeah. are high on him. But the one guy that no one's really – has the guts to say he should be on this team, in my opinion, is Captain America, Patrick Reed. What's his status right now? Is he, he's is he playing. okay? He's he playing. is playing. He's playing in Atlanta. Yes, he is on the team. Okay. Uh, he's okay. on the team. He's in the field. But okay. I, think he needs to, I think he needs to play well. Let's, yeah, I let's think he needs to prove himself. He needs to play well sure. at the Tour Championship. But I think just for – shits and giggles he's a perfect guy to have on this team because he thrives in this environment I he, is does. The, he is the ian poulter <laughs> of team usa where he does shit maybe for weeks at a time and then he put him on the stage and he's a crowd favorite they're at home he's gonna pump up the crowd 
And as yeah. I said before, you know, you've got a team of guys. I know, you know, Brett, we talked a little bit about this before, who if you could do some pairings and some moving around, there's a good chance. It's going to be really hard to put two guys who like each other. Would you agree with <laughs> that? That, 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 is like, that is such a uh, fascinating piece of this upcoming Ryder Cup. It's like it, it is, you know, you almost have to do like babysitting to like oh, get the right, totally. you know, to get the right thing going. It's like, um, you know, and we can, we can talk and we will, we'll talk a little bit about, um, how, how matching the players is such a huge piece. Like getting those matchups, those pairings correct yeah. is a huge piece of being successful. Um, but before we do that, I do want to, we have some comments. Um, this one's a, a big fan of the show, especially on the Facebook channel that it's on. Um, but he does ask a very interesting question. And I think, um, I want to, I want to go to this because, you guys know I like to always compare golf to the rest of the sports that I might be a little bit more in tune with, right? And what we what we know is like the MLB and the NBA All Star Games, those last one or two spots always go to like the old timer who's a legend and doing all these things. And um, do do we see that in golf? Like, is a guy like Phil, who's a fan favorite, as our Mark Thompson? writes to us in the comments. He's a fan favorite. He's got 20 plus years of writer experience. Do you see guys like that getting an opportunity where, you know, I'm thinking back to the NBA all-star game where like Shaq in his later years when he was like in, in Phoenix and was awful, but he was on the all-star team because he's Shaq. Like, are, are we going to see and that? And believe me, please don't get a mis, misinterpreted uh, here. I'm not saying yeah. Phil's awful, but no, Phil's you great. Know, Phil. those names we talked about. Yeah, I, you know, listen, John, I'm sure we agree. Like, Phil is a great player. He has been there. He brings so much to the game. But I think if you want to win, I think you have to look at the players that are currently hot. Yes, I know. I got it. Phil won the PGA Championship. We all know Phil won. We all love Phil. We all love for him to be there. I, I mean, I think he should maybe be, uh, a, you know, an assistant captain. I mean, be, being there, definitely for sure. I think in one of the little stricker, one of his pods, I guess. But do I think that he should be have a spot on the team? You know, listen, I think those spots are really earned. I mean, look, ladies on the, the Solheim Cup, I mean, they've gone through this as well. There's players like Stacey Lewis who, you know, is – she's a, a veteran on the team. She plays incredible Solheim Cup, but she was left off the team. She didn't make a spot on the team. So I just think that these are hard decisions. We're, the, we're, we're there to win, right? These players, they're there to win, and they want to compile the strongest team there. I think for playing, you need the most – the hottest – and producing players right now, but I think coaching them and being a part of it, I think Phil could be on the sideline and still be a part of it. And that's not too. Yeah, this, this is not an All Star game. Let's let's call it what it is. This is a this is a competition and a, a heated competition uh, that's been going on for a very long time. And I think as as much as I love Phil and and his experience is certainly very valuable, I think it's time for Team USA to start to embrace some of the new blood. In mm -hmm. the golfing world, where guys like Spieth and Finau and DJ could step up and take those leadership roles, you, know, you can't keep putting guys that have been on the team for all along just to be the leaders when you're not going to develop new leaders. So I think the, the you know the brain trust with the PGA of America and the PGA Tour understands that we love Phil. He's great for TV. He's great for camaraderie. Everyone in the world likes him. But this is an opportunity to pass the torch. This is a new wave of golfers at least as we've seen this year maybe more than ever and here's a perfect opportunity for captain stricker to give opportunities for guys to take the lead and to be those new uh generation of leaders yeah well, did if, you uh, if phil has one thing going for him it's that uh everyone likes him which is not something that can be said for some other players who are going to be on that right <laughs> up team. But, guys, uh, before we continue that conversation, I teased a little bit a few minutes ago that we were going to be being joined uh, by Matt Minister, who is a uh, pro PGA caddy and was on Patrick's bag uh, this past weekend. And I have some pretty good news about that update. Um, he's here. He's, he's in the waiting room to come <laughs> in. And so without further ado, Poor I guy. would like to uh, to bring Matt in. And I, and Matt, before we get started, man, I just want to say thanks for joining us. You know, you're a PGA pro caddy who works with Patrick Cantlay, and you're joining us today, which is very exciting, on behalf of Gillette Deodorant, which uh, recently launched its new anti uh, perspirant that helps keep golfers feeling fresh. Man, could I have used that this past weekend at the golf outing? <laughs> 
because man, was I uh, sweating a little bit on some of those putts I had to make. But recently, Matt, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about this, you teamed up with uh, Gillette Deodorant to launch the 72 Club, which is, uh, yeah, I'm excited to hear about this, an exclusive club for golfers of all levels, which includes me, uh, Christina, and John. I get to be included in the all levels category <laughs> um, to be rewarded for improving their game all summer long. 72 hours can be right. the final days of a major. And when that tension rises, the pros need even more protection. Matt, I need a lot of that protection when I'm on my local public course just trying to get, <laughs> get, get in get in without a triple digit score there. But Matt, thanks so much for joining us, Matt. I really appreciate it. Yeah, happy to be on the show. So so talk to us uh, real quick. What, could we open the show talking about our own reactions as, as fans and viewers um, ab about – uh, what it was like to watch the epic playoff battle. But you had a unique seat and perspective. Talk to us. What was it like for you? What was going through your mind? You know, I I actually watched when I got to Atlanta uh, on the play you're in the moment, focus. You need the blinders on. You buck out the fact that there's, you know, thousands of people screaming and yelling at you. Um, and, and, you know, Patrick was so focused and he was putting unbelievably, obviously. You, you expect him to make it. Every single one's going in. The next one's going in, too. The next one's going in. Then I watch it on TV and you go, I can't believe all those putts went in. <laughs> it's like, there's no way. There's no way he's going to make another one. Another one goes in. Another one goes in. <laughs> uh, watching on TV, I mean, that was that was some really neat stuff that went on. Um, how you keep your cool, you know, Gillette keeps me cool. That's how I stayed <laughs> nice and calm and cool, you know. You must have uh, been lathered in it. Were you lathered in Gillette because you weren't sweating? Neither was I, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I taped, I taped two bars of the deodorant right underneath nice. my arms. Um, <laughs> You know, it's 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 nerve wracking, but when you're there in the moment, it it actually isn't. Uh, it's it's almost hard to explain. I, I guess after doing this for 20 years, maybe that's part of it. it it's you've been there a few times before, and so it becomes just it. It's part of the process, as Patrick calls it. You, you do the same thing over and over again, then you don't become as nervous. Well, I, I definitely need to switch from my current deodorant brand to Gillette because watching you, you and, love it. and watching you and 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 watching Patrick, man, uh, keeping your cool, keeping your focus, right? Like being able to 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 stay in the zone. Um, how and and you know, honestly, like I know you know you're here on behalf of Gillette, you know, but in all seriousness, do things like that help you stay focused when you're feeling comfortable when you're not? feeling uncomfortable, your, your clothes aren't sticking to you, you're not, you know, does all that really matter for, on the golf course in, in those moments? Absolutely. And it, it matters to me. Um, obviously, if I was, if my odor was offensive, it would offend the guy I'm standing next to all day long. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it absolutely matters. I can bug him anytime I want, but I don't want to bug him because I smell. Um, <laughs> You know, it, it, yeah, it, it, every everything for these guys when you're trying to shoot 27 under, it took 28 if we were going to win, you know, straight out. Um, everything has to be right, literally. So it, it, the clothing, whatever, you know, you, the deodorant you wear, all of that stuff truly does matter. You know, I have a question. I, I was watching the tournament. I was on the edge of my seat. I was pacing. I was walking in circles around my living room. But what I was watching, uh, my heart was racing, and it didn't look like either one of you were at all concerned about what's going on. You look, Patrick, looked calm. I know as a caddy, you have so many responsibilities during the during a round. This is not a normal round, and so what is it that's going on between that relationship with you and Patrick on those, you know, those last six holes? How are you keeping? Is, is there a conversation? Are you talking? Is it not talking? Or like, what's happening between the two of you during those those holes? Well, there is, there, we don't talk a lot. Uh, um, he generally likes to walk and he's doing his own mental preparation. Um, so he usually is walking by himself. One of the conversations, I know you guys were talking about the Ryder Cup before I came on. You know, one of the conversations 
conversations we had within that last six holes was as people were screaming as loud as they can at us, I said, you know, this is actually pretty good practice for the Ryder Cup because this is what it's going to be like. Um, the, wow. the atmosphere the atmosphere there with the with the fans and everything, it's been a while since we've had that. And it was really, really cool. Um, you know, and the fact that they got behind Patrick, I mean, they were yelling for Bryson most of the day. And then, and then there was a group of people that started cheering for Patrick. I, I thought it was amazing. I and mean, he acknowledged them you know, after he ended up winning, which I thought was really cool also. Um, you know, it, again, I, I would say it's more Patrick than me. His personality is that, you know, just – this is business. It's every single mm -hmm. shot is the same and he goes about his process the same. So I can sort of fall into his rhythm, um, which is a very cool, calm rhythm. And I know if I start getting amped up, if I start talking too fast or stuff like that, he's going to notice and he's going to say, you know, he might look at me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, it's John, you're, on mute, buddy. you're on mute, John. Ha, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Matt, was um, I know I feel like you deserve a lot of the credit that uh, for Patrick's putting success and and his and the preparation you did coming to Kay's Valley, you know, not a course that you see quite a bit, obviously, on tour. And what type of scouting did you do on the golf course in advance, you know, coming off a short week up here in New Jersey? And did you feel like that golf course just set up well for him, maybe to his eye or so, just to his, to his ball play? Yeah, I, I wasn't working at the Northern Trust. Um, so I was actually able to walk the golf course on the Monday, which many of the, uh, the caddies weren't able to do so. So I did get to, you know, I'm, I think every caddy did their due diligence. I was able to do it without being rushed. Um, the first text I sent Patrick about Caves Valley is I said, you're going to love these greens. Mm. I didn't realize, you know, how, <laughs> how much he would love them. I didn't realize, you know, he'd set a new, a new record. 31, putts, 31 birdies, know. right? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I just know that, you know, like he's been really successful at Muirfield Village at the Memorial Tournament. The greens aren't the same, but they had the same feel, same grass, same every putt's going to break, and he loves playing high line breakers, pouring them in. Um, you know, with the, with the course being wet, a little bit soft, I didn't think it mattered that much for the tee to green stuff. I mean, either you have it or you don't. Um, and he hits the ball straight. So I wasn't concerned about that. It, it just, I didn't realize that the putting would be as good as it was. Yeah. Well, what I, what I love most, what I love most about watching him putt was at least the uphill putts. They were going in with some pace, mm -hmm. you know, they weren't, they, 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 and that to me, that means confidence when that ball is going yeah. in with pace, especially on the uphill putt. So yeah. it's really fun to he, see that. Yeah, he adjusted really well. Um, in general, he likes side hill or downhill actually, because he he's a die putter. So the, the, you're 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 spot on. Those uphill putts, those two putts he made on 18, you know, those are ones that they were carrying pace. I mean, poured them in. So so Matt, look the 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 running the running joke on this show um, is that I'm very self deprecating because I am not. A, uh, a good golfer. I love watching y'all on TV and I love going on the course um, and I work hard at it, but I'm, I'm not there yet. And you're here, you're here with us today on behalf of Gillette and this new yeah. initiative y'all have launched, the 72 Club. And what really caught my eye, as I alluded to earlier, was golfers of all levels. And it's not often that I get to be included <laughs> in, a group of, <laughs> in a group of golfers. So, so Matt, do me a favor. T talk to us and, t and tell our audience about the 72 Club, your involvement in it, and, and what yeah. they can come to expect from, from, from digging deep into it. So I partnered with Gillette through the Caddy Network, which is a, um, a, cad it's a great place on social media for you guys, anybody to get uh, – Caddy's perspective of our inside the rope stuff on tour. Um, they they brought Gillette to me, or I brought me to Gillette. However you want to say it. Um, the seventy two club. The the key is to go on thegrint.com backslash Gillette seventy two club. That's where you're going to find most of your information on the club. The idea behind the club is to get golfers of all levels, like you said, 
to try to strive to shoot 72. Um, and it's a net 72. So it doesn't matter if you're a two handicap, doesn't matter if you're a 25 handicap, you're trying to, you're trying to be the best golfer you can be at your skill level. And the cool thing is you can put your scores in, you can track your progress. You can actually see if you're getting better. Um, you know, in, in the past, you have your handicap system. This, I think, you know, where your handicap, some guys want a low handicap, some want high, you know, are we trying to make money on the course or not? <laughs> um, so, you know, with this, with this, you can have some a different type of fun and, you know, you can win prizes from Gillette uh, in product. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a great way to grow the game and, and to get all of us to try to be the best golfers we can be. And as you guys can see, I put it on the screen, uh, www.thegrin.com backslash Gillette 72 club. Make sure you go check that out. Um, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you another question. Let's, let's, let me, let's talk for a second about the caddy network. Um, I think you're gonna be doing some content for them. Is that, is that correct? And, and what can fans, you know, sort of expect from that? You know, I think you get a back, you'll get the backstory behind events. You'll get to a different perspective of what transpires in an event. Like we were talking about preparation, what we do before an event to get, as much information uh, as, as possible to give to our players. I think you also see, you know, I think most of the caddies that, it, that I just did one um, after the win where I talk about kind of the important shots, the things that mattered the most to me, what, what happened that I thought was the reason that we won, um, which I think is a great, I find it very interesting. I watch what the other caddies say, you know, to see what they took out of the event um, and as to why they're, they're, they thought their player won. And I think that's, for me, it's a way to even get better at my job. Well, let me, uh, before we let you go, and again, thank you for, for being so gracious with your time. And thanks to Gillette for, uh, for, for setting all this up. And, and, that, and, and the gang guys on the bottom of the screen, you'll see it scrolling across the bottom there, the grint.com backslash Gillette 72 club. Make sure you go check that out. Um, I know I will, uh, because, uh, I'm always, I'm always looking for ways to get better and this will be a good way. And with Gillette guys, I might not sweat so much, which is a real, real issue for, for some of our dark skinned folk over here. So let me, uh, <laughs> John, you know what I'm talking about, baby. So, so Matt, before we let you go, I want to ask you uh, this. You talk about the Caddy Network, a little bit of inside, behind the scenes action of what goes on in the golf course. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, and if you can't answer, completely understand. We did talk about it before you came on. What happened in that little exchange between Patrick and uh, and Bryce in there? Um, and if you can't answer, you don't want to answer. It's totally cool. No, I, I uh, can answer. I can answer. Yeah. So it, it, every week, there's going to be you know guys uh, have their peripheral vision, and there's so many people moving, and there's always something going on, and they're trying to be as good as they can be. It happens every week guy might be standing in the wrong place guy might be walking not thinking about the fact the other guy's playing in this situation i think that's all it was i think you know bryson was getting into the shot and we were behind um they asked us to speed up our pace of play we weren't put on the clock and anything but they told us you know you guys need to catch a group in front of you we're 40 yards behind every single the hole that we're hitting drivers on so you know, we're we're actually walking you know to try to catch up to him and i think i think that's all it was is that he saw patrick walking and he didn't know if patrick was going to keep going and so just for his sake he was turning around and say hey, just stop walking i i i did watch the telecast i think they made a too big a deal out of it it, it really isn't it's well, a non-issue Matt, you'll be pleased to know that's why we have the great John Mascari here on this show to give us some pro insight because that's exactly what he said. He said it's nothing yeah. to do about well, nothing. It's, it's a fact. I mean, in today's age, we want it to be something because, you know, it just adds a little bit of fun to everything or, you know, it gives people something to talk about. But, you know, it's yeah. it's nothing. Matt, well, you know, I just have a, I just have a quick question though, Matt, yeah. just real quick. I know your time is, is limited with us, but I do have a question for you though, in regards to just everything that's going on in golf and in media and, you know, with fans coming back, I know you're so excited to have the fans back in the gallery. We've got Ryder cup. I mean, that energy that you talked about yeah. that, 
last week, uh, Sunday was just such a good um, idea of what you're going to expect, right? You're paired with Bryson. Bryson's going to be out there. And there's a lot of characters on this Ryder Cup team this year, yeah. right? So you've got a lot of yeah. characters out there. Do you think that's go going to be um, a distraction or do you think that's going to be, you know, something that's going to work well for uh, the U.S. team? I think everybody, we played so many rounds together. I think it, it, the team will be very gelled a lot more than I think, you know, you want to put everybody as being different. And they all are different in their own way. But we all know each other really well. And you see the, you see the true person out on the golf course most of the time. And, um, you know, the fact that we're very comfortable around each other, we know everybody's strengths. I, I don't, I don't see it at all as being a distraction or a deterrent or anything like that. I think, um, I think the team will very much be ready to rise to the occasion. And yeah, we're well, excited. Thank you. Yeah, uh, me too. Th thanks so much, man, man. I mean, this was, this was incredible. Uh, this was, uh, a, a real treat for us on, on the tee. And uh, we hope that we can have you back. And uh, again, thanks, thanks for joining us. And again, guys, our audience is scrolling on the bottom of the screen. Even after Matt leaves, we're going to leave it up scrolling so you guys can make sure you get there and understand what uh, Matt's doing with Gillette and the 72 Club. There you go. But, uh, you know, make sure you head yeah, to, right to the grid. What happened? Oh, just a little. Oh, there it is. Boom. There, <laughs> there it is. is. Can't miss it. There Can't it miss it. Yeah, there it is. All right. Yeah. So, so guys, head to, under here. head to the grid.com slash Gillette 72 club and make sure you do it on, uh, you, you, you check it out. And because there, I guess there's opportunities, right, Matt, throughout the year to win They're prizes, all. VIP experiences, all that stuff. That's right. You'll see, you'll get special offers from Gillette, your owner, and, uh, some of the winners will receive some t-shirts, I believe. So there we go. We'll make you better. Right. Get better right, Matt. and get some good deodorant, you know? Hey, I told you, I'm not, I'm a man of my word. I'm making the switch. Yeah. You, you made yeah, a believer out of me after, after Sunday. You'll be so, home. so Gillette, here I come, man. But guys, thanks again, Matt. Thank you so much, buddy. We'll uh, hopefully we can do this again. You're, you're fantastic. Caddy network. Uh, check that out. Grint.com slash Gillette 72 club. Matt, we'll catch you later, bud. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Matt. Wow, he is fantastic. I told, that you, was that was that man. I told you, you guys are all blowing it all out of proportion. That I was, think Caddies uh, are some of the coolest people on earth, by the way. I just I, love, I know I know a few of them, and I'm telling you, just they're just such great. They're so they're just awesome. I, I just I, love, I, I, love I could talk to them for hours. I love the inside baseball aspect that you could mm -hmm. get. And we get a lot of that with John and we're blessed to have it. But for guys, you know, for people who aren't used to seeing, especially like on the golf telecast, right? You get yeah. some stories, you get some whatever, but you're right, Christina, the caddies have this, this unique, and it's very different than other sports because right. they, they're very involved in the strategy. They're very involved in the mm -hmm. process, but they're not actually the ones doing it. And that gives right. them such a unique storytelling perspective. I really hope people do take advantage and go, go check that stuff out. Yeah, they, if you if anyone's not familiar with the Caddy Network, you definitely you follow them on Instagram. You, there's they're all over the place, and they do share some really cool stories. Um, it's a great group of of men and women that are in there, so definitely check it out. Awesome. All right, before we go, I want to pick back up real quick with the Ryder Cup conversation because it's also where we left off with Matt before we left. Um, he doesn't think the personalities are going to be too too much of an issue. Um, and I think, you know, as someone who's who's going to be close to the team and like you said, they all know each other, it makes sense. Um, I'm not entirely sold. I'm not going to lie because I think at the end <laughs> of the day, personalities are personalities. Um, what do you guys think in all seriousness? Give me your, your professional opinions here. Do you, do you really <laughs> think those personalities and those personality clashes could be something that Shricker needs to, to manage? You know, I, and again, I think of the great coaches, not that he's necessarily a, a coach here, but um, I think of the great coaches of all time. Phil Jackson had to manage Kobe and Shaq, three championships, had to manage Dennis Rodman and Jordan and Pippen, three championships. I, is that something that, you know, you know, has to end up being a, a thing to think about? I don't, I don't think we're giving Steve Stricker enough credit as a, as a manager. I think, I think he's tougher than you think guys. And I, you know, this week he kind of put his thumb on the whole Bryson and Kepka thing. He called the meet separately and was like, listen, 
put your beef aside. I need to know if you're committed on this team. I need you to be able to be a part of this team, be um, buy into to our our goal, and stop with the menial little crap. And both of those guys were like, "You're right. We're putting yeah. you know, went and buy yeah. kind of put a summon on there." And I think um, I think he's probably going to have that little sit down with the entire team and kind of get them motivated that way. And, and listen, I, I think of it like you know, listen, I'm a Yankee fan. I grew up in New York. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, it was the Bronx Zoo. You know, the guys like Reggie and Billy Martin and Chris Chambers <laughs> and those guys that they did not like each other, and it was crazy. Or maybe even yeah. the '86 Mets. You know, for for maybe those that are a little younger than I am, but. It was it was craziness. It was there was guys that didn't like each other. There was guys that loved each other. They played pranks. They they went out late at night. They partied. They they were abandoned misfits. And both of those teams were successful because they got behind the goal. And that's yeah. what good managers do. And that's what good coaches do is you, you manage the personalities, but yeah. you unite for the goal. And the goal yeah, for this team, especially after what we've gone through, is to bring the Ryder Cup back to the states on home. Yeah, court. you know. I and a rider, you know, golf, as we know, is an individual sport. So it is those handful of events that are these team team sports. And I think where my, you know, when I have this conversation with other people, you know, we talk about, um, you know, is this, when they're, they're coming together to, to, you know, to represent the U.S., right? I mean, there's so much energy and, and all of us have either been to an event or watching on television and we know how the volume and the energy is like, it's like, like, raises the roof when it comes to energy, right? You're, everyone's screaming, there's, there's cheers. And I'm, I'm, I'm torn between like the, the, the relationships and the characters that are on, on the, the Ryder Cup team this year. And then the dysfunction of fans that are out there right now with the Bryson, the Brooksy comments with uh, Monaghan coming out, having to talk to the players to kind of dilute it a little bit. You know, you're not allowed to, you know, tell people like you're going to get kicked out if you start calling Brooksy in front of DeChambeau. It clearly is getting to him. And so, you know, we're playing in the United States. And though I don't think you're getting that if you go to if this was playing overseas in Europe. But I think it's kind of like this, 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 these tensions between these players that I think the media has just love to add fuel and make them bigger than they are possibly. It's like you said, there's players, that, there's people on teams and people in, in this in golf that don't necessarily really like each other. And that is okay. I think that's in all sports. But when they come together, they have to come together. But then you add this other element of these fans and they're ruthless and complicates things and you know now you have like the commissioner coming in having to say yo all right are you guys Give are you guys gonna squash this Which, you know let me let me tell you can we, can how, we talk about that for a second yes. please Brent? That's, yeah. that's, actually, that's actually where i'm going next guys and it's actually gonna think this is what i wanted to close the show on um but and, and before we get there let me just say at this level and, and at the level of all professional sports you're not coaching x's and o's anymore <clears throat> John, you hit the nail on the head with this. Christina, you said it too. You're managing personalities. These guys are uber talented. You're going to throw some schemes out, you know, whether it's a team sport or, or with golf. These guys are all good. When you bring them together, it's about managing personalities. And to this end, bring it a full circle. Are you effing kidding me? That we gotta, <laughs> we gotta tell, we gotta tell the fans we're gonna kick them out if they use the word Brycey. You got, you got. I do you find got NBA. It, obnoxious or not, the, that's that's being a fan, right? I know, like, but you know, you golf know. is one of those sports that you have. I mean, it's it is it's quiet, right? I mean, it is amazing you can get twenty thousand people to shut their mouths for like a couple seconds and be quiet. But when it's so quiet and the tensions are there, and then you have these, I know I think fans have gotten to be super obnoxious at these golf events. I've been to a bunch of them, and I just Christina, Christina, Christina. I know, Christina, I know. Christina, I know. Yeah, great. But it's I mean, not really. golf. That's not golf. Give golf. Me a, break. a little bit more respect for the game and just oh, all right, do so golf We're gonna we're gonna have an entire like crowd it. of first and how the thirds here. I don't like <laughs> it. Are you serious? No, I, I don't like it. Grow, oh. grow, up. grow it. Grow up. it. Okay. it. Mashed potato. Grow it's all. You're, all you're a professional it. athlete. Thank you. Grow Thank up you. and shut them up with your play. Okay, listen. That's it. I, don't know, you know, I, I, played, I played golf in college, but I also played ice hockey in college. And I got abused. When we would go and we would play at Navy down in Annapolis, we'd play at Princeton, we'd go and play Wagner College. I would get I was the goalie for the hockey team. I would get abused. 
But there's one way to shut people up. Play well and that's win. That's it. And that shuts that's up only, everyone. That's, so that's either have fun, with playing it, well. have fun with it. You know what? Hey, yeah. you know, sign your autograph, Brooksy, if someone wants that. You know, like, or shut up. And hey, and this is the problem. Play. This is the problem, guys. Go golfers already have, you know, this this stereotype, if you will, that they're they're soft. They're you know, you can't talk in their backswing, you can't step on the putting line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and look, that's I'm married to one of those guys. But no, I'm but guys, by the way, and I, I joke that I'm not a great golfer and all these other things. When I when I go on uh when I'm golfing, I don't want people talking in my backswing. Right. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want that either. But but you're not a want, professional. But that's what I'm saying. If, if you call me, if you call me Breddy, or if you, me, if you call me Johnny, because my rival John Mascari, you think I'm I'm gonna have you thrown out of a tournament? Are you kidding? What do they me? do like behind behind the basketball net when guys are doing free throws? They bang those little things together. Should we start doing that at golf wait, wait, wait. If you, slap think, at if, golf tournaments? If, if you think during a free throw, no. all they're doing is banging those things together. And not cursing their their the no. free throw shooter's mom and his family and, and every I mean, guys. This no. is this is so ridiculous. I hate it. I feel like it's turning into like Happy Gilmore. It's like I I don't like it. I don't like the I don't like how over the top. Oh, that's the such a bad top. thing. Let's not turn into <laughs> Happy Gilmore. I think no, it's I think, bad. No. Hold on. Let me button my no. top button before I Wait, hold on. Like button it up, baby. Better? Button it up. Is it my <laughs> better? Don't, don't you think? Can be top of Just saying. Don't, don't you oh think there's a don't you think there's a wide spectrum between like completely buttoned up in white tie corporate For and sure. happy Gilmore. And that Listen. Brooksy telling Brooksy is not anywhere near happy Gilmore. Right. And it's uh, after the round. It was like he, he said it in the middle of his swing. It was as he's walking by. Give me a break. I agree. Man I agree. Up. I, you know, when, when you are, he could walk by, but you, uh, you know how many times he probably hears that. Uh, you know I'm not the big. I'm not. Oh, I'm not a DJ fan. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm defending Bryson DeChambeau right what's now. Wrong with what's wrong with what's wrong with oh, no. Let's get him one All of those right. giant, giant cards. You know, like that. Like the I'm sorry with the little puppy dog. With the mm, I'm sorry. Give me a break. Why, why do you have to get me fired up at the end of the show? Because, because, I, because I, I tell you what. I, I'm, I'm cracking open another lie. white claw. I'm going crazy tonight. You, I, you I, go crazy, John. You just go I, drink that seltzer. I wasn't ready. trying to clean up my fridge. I wasn't ready for the Christina Thompson heel turn at the end of the show here. I was not, I was not ready for that. <laughs> Huge um, but, heel turn. Wait, I'm baby you. face. You're baby face. Christina, big heel turn. Let's just go back to Baba Booey all the time. How about that? Listen, uh, we've got the Solheim Cup coming up this week. I mean, we've yes, got like the, the same thing that. that's happening at the Ryder Cup, right? You've got U.S. versus Europe. We've got Solheim Cup. So let me give you the rundown on this. So, so no love for Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> hey, I tell you, um, you know, hey, no, keep it fair. So. <laughs> I don't think you're going to have anybody at, at Inverness this week screaming any names to any of these players. And I think all of the, the spectators out there are going to be screaming USA or singing that Europe song that I can never remember. Um, but Solheim Cup, I mean, I just want to say, like, I think there, I'm just, I wish there was more talk about Solheim Cup. We talk so much about Ryder Cup, but we really don't hear that much people talk, not as many people talking about Solheim Cup, right? So, um, I'm just glad to have the opportunity to remind everybody that it is being aired. It's Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of this week. It is playing at Inverness Club out in Toledo, Ohio. We're getting um, an all female broadcast, right? Is that correct? Yes. Well, no, not Return? for this. That is going to be oh. for the LPJ Shoprite Classic that's Excuse happening okay. in yes. South Jersey okay. um, later this month. So that's Definitely. that's news in itself. I mean, we're I know we're going to talk about that in another show, but um, but this week we've got the 17th. Um, Solheim Cup. Um, we've got two incredible teams. I mean, I think the U.S. right now has is favored. They've got the advantage. I mean, um, they've got a significant leg up with their players. But the U, the European team, they're they're young. Um, not a lot of big winners. I think Anna Nordquist is like the most recent. Obviously, she just won the British Open um, 
last week, but I think it's going to be an incredible battle out there. And we've seen a lot of other tour championships played at Inverness. So it's really exciting to see the ladies being able to play out there. The crowds are expected to be phenomenal. You're going to see a lot of your red, white, and blues out there. Um, the U S team it's led by Patty Hurst, which was interesting though, because you know, there was a lot of players we talked about who's going to be, who's making the team cut for the Ryder cup. But, you know, Cat, Patty Hurst had, to, Hurst had to make a decision also. And I think there were a few disappointments of some players that didn't make the team, one of being Stacey Lewis, who I mentioned before. But she was invited um, to be um, um, an assistant captain with Michelle Wee, as, along with Angela Stanford. You know, Stacey's born in Toledo, you know, and she was part of getting that, that event to be held in Toledo. So I think the local fans are a little bummed that she's not going to be playing and competing, but she's going to be there. And uh, she unfortunately missed it, the the – um, the Solon Cup back in 2019, she had some back issues. And that's how um, we had the, her replacement. I think it was Ali. Was it Ali Ewing? No. Who was it that came on there? I forget. Brittany Altamari. I think she's the one who replaced Stacey. But anyway, we have a great tournament coming up this weekend. I really encourage everyone to tune in, watch it, make your really fun red, white, and blue drinks, and support Team USA. All right. And uh, real quick, thanks again to Gillette and to Matt Minister for uh, joining us today and, and giving us a really great conversation. You can check this out on all of our social platforms. You can also check it out on the uh, on the T uh, Pro Golf Network YouTube channel. So make sure you go and check for that. Like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you think about the conversation as we're having it. And uh, I believe we'll see you next week as we get closer to the Ryder Cup and um, but who knows? I don't make those decisions. I am uh, I I'm usually just behind the glass, hidden away like the ugly stepchild. Brent, so, I got say, to do. This, was just, this was a civilized and very well run show, and it was nice mm. to speak to you both. I am. Uh, uh, maybe we might be up to something here. It was so I, uh, civilized, so buttoned oh up. God, so oh, sorry, Brooksy. No, I'm just saying, ready. you know, it's. Yeah, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to, I'll let you say it. I'm not, I'm not going to say it, but um, if I do say it, this will certainly be the last time you see me in this top <laughs> left corner. Um, guys on that note, Anita, we love, we kid, we miss. We'll see you next week and we'll see you all next week and uh, have a great night.